Chase Elliott's back at it again. Chase Elliott threw another temper tantrum this season. This time it was against his teammate Kyle Larson for contact that Larson made with the nine car Chase Elliott, exiting his pit box coming off of pit road late in Sunday's race at Kansas. Chase, not being happy about the contact, decided to sideswipe the five car of Kyle Larson and voice his displeasure. And then he proceeded to get out of the car after the race, go down and stomp his little feet, lean into Larson's window, and I assume tell him how upset he was with Larson once again. And then afterwards, when asked about it, Chase does what Chase typically does and acts like he knows nothing about what they're talking about. It's like talking to a child and being like, why'd you do this? And they're like, why did I do what? And you're like, well, you know what you did. And they're like, what did I do? It's infuriating. And maybe Kevin Harvick was right when he said after Bristol a few years back in 2021 that trying to talk to Chase Elliott's a lot like trying to talk to his 10-year-old. You just can't get anything through to them. And it really feels like maybe that's what is actually going on because Chase Elliott... Uh, every time he's in a situation where he's asked questions that are critical of his behavior, he always acts like he doesn't know what's going on. And it's not endearing, it's not funny, and it's not even, like, interesting. He's a guy that doesn't have much of a personality. He's got the same personality as a shower curtain. It's just, it's very throwawayable. You can just be like, well, I don't need this anymore. Replace it with something new. However, Chase Elliott getting fired up and throwing temper tantrums, a fiery Chase Elliott, that is mildly interesting for NASCAR's most popular driver to go out there and act like this. And he doesn't want to embrace that, which is fine. Maybe he wants to keep up the image of being a throwaway personality like he is. But as NASCAR's most popular driver, at times you need to maybe act like it. And if he doesn't want to be the most popular driver, which it really feels like he does not want to be, then that's totally fine. Um, but at the same time, when you're the face of NASCAR, appointed or not, whether you want it to be or don't want to be, kind of are, you can't just go out there and act like this all the time. This, you know, I don't know, happy off season, Merry New Year type of thing or whatever he said, happy Christmas, Merry New Year off season. Who knows? I don't actually care what his statement there was, but he did the same thing to Bob on Sunday when Bob asked him about the contact with Larson. And maybe... Chase is still just upset with how the season's gone. Maybe he's still just trying to come to the terms with the fact that he's Hendrick's number two or maybe even number three driver at this point. Uh, for a guy that seemed like his whole future was set out with him being the face of Hendrick Motorsports for the next 15 to 20 years, having Kyle Larson come on board and now William Byron and start taking away a lot of wins and championship from him probably doesn't sit well with, with Chase Elliott. And like I said, he's had a season to not remember, a season to forget for sure, but when you continually act like this, eventually something has to change, right? To Larson's credit, he got out of the car after the race, was asked about it by TV, explained what happened, and said that I knew I had to make a move out to get around the six car, knowing that the six car was going to come out basically at the same time as me, didn't want to make contact with the six, decided that, you know, touching the nine on the side wasn't the worst thing that could happen because, again, the six was going to be trying to slow us both down, Chase obviously didn't take, um, didn't appreciate what happened there. Sideswipes the five, and Kyle's like, well, you know, he'll go back and watch the video and then he'll understand. But I don't think Chase will. It just seems like he's so wrapped up in his own world that whatever anybody says is, it doesn't matter. Whatever Chase thinks is what Chase thinks. And that's fine. That's, a, that's one approach to it. But you can't go out there and keep acting like this multiple times this season. And yeah, there's obviously a clear disdain for Kyle Larson from the Chase Elliott side of Hendrick Motorsports. Ever since Fontana 2022, when Larson definitely put him into the wall. Can't dispute that. He just pushed up, not pushed up. He just made a complete right down the front stretch of Fontana, put the nine car into the wall. Flash forward to Watkins Glen of last year. He goes down in the corner pushes the nine car wide. Chase doesn't have a shot at winning. Larson goes on to win the race. Chase was super upset about that after the race. Uh, told Jeff Gordon and Rick Hendrick, it appeared to be like he voiced, that's it, that's it, that's over. Uh, which, you know, obviously the two of them just can't really seem to coexist in Hendrick Motorsports. And then you flash forward to this year, Chase, of course, is having all kinds of issues just trying to be competitive, actually get to the racetrack, not get suspended. And then he's got Larson out here who's just coming off a win in the Southern 500, got three wins already this year. Chase is still struggling to find one win. 
just even finishing in the top five seems to be a struggle for him at this point. And when in a race where he actually had good speed on Sunday at Kansas, he of course has to deal with Kyle Larson and he's not happy about it. Takes a side swipe at him. So yeah, I think there's just a lot of frustration coming out from the Chase Elliott side of things and he's just not happy at the moment. He hasn't seemed happy for the better part of a year and a half now since uh, essentially since Kyle Larson won the championship. Uh, so I don't know if the two coincide or or are related to one another, but he doesn't seem like he's having a lot of fun. I don't think the offseason can come quick enough for him. He and Noah Gragson both were, you know, they're wishing for the offseason back in June. So, yeah, it's very odd uh, just how Chase Elliott's whole demeanor has been uh, lately. But he continues to throw temper tantrums. Maybe he should just embrace that. Just be the next Kyle Busch. Because uh, his fans would certainly embrace it, and I'm sure we'll get plenty of comments about it here as well. But yeah, Chase Elliott just needs to calm down. Things aren't as serious as he seems to be making them out to be. Not like Larson went up there and tried to wreck and ruin his race. It just was incidental contact, and then Chase goes down and hits him. And the other thing is, I just, I, you know, said on here, or on TikTok, wherever it was, about Bubba not doing pre-race interview at Daytona. Pre-race interviews mean absolutely nothing. Like, you learn nothing from them. I don't care if you ever do one or not. Post-race interviews, again, sometimes you might learn something, sometimes you don't. But, like, when you're asked a question about, you know, your behavior on track, you don't have to straight up admit, like, oh, yeah, I was trying to wreck the guy. Don't do that, because we know that gets you suspended. But when you're asked a, a question that's, I don't know, critical about one of your actions or your character, maybe just answer it. Don't play dumb. I think that's so annoying. Um, but again, to each their own. You can handle it however you would like. I just don't think it's very endearing, if you will. So, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Threads at Break Hard Blog.